We're going to go through the fitting of the titanium 2P peak. Um, this is a sample of titanium apatite composite and as you can see there's a, a number of different oxidation states that are present. Uh, this is a good example for the transition metals. It shows a number of things. We have going to have an asymmetric peak for the metal. Uh, we have spin orbit splitting going on and uh, so we may have to deal with multiple splitting for some of the states and so we're going to go through those things. This sample's already been charge corrected to, to carbon 1s set to 284 point8 EV for adventitious carbon so we're already done that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is create a background region. We'll go to components and we want to start adding in some components. So the first thing we're going to put in is the the spin orbit doublets for the uh, metallic peak. So let's add two peaks and we'll just slide them around so that we they're more where they should be. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we need to do to constrain these two peaks. For spectra with spin orbit splitting there will be a specific area ratio between the, the peaks and we'll need to be con constrain our spectrum to, to mimic that. So for the 2p peaks we have between the 2p 3 halves and the 2p 1 half peaks we have an area ratio of 2 to 1. If we were looking at d orbitals it would be a 3 to 2 ratio and f or orbitals it would be a 4 to 3 ratio. Back at our spectrum if we start fitting these so this will be our titanium 2p 3 halves peak for metallic titanium and this will be our titanium 2p 1 half peak for metallic titanium. The area ratio between the 3 halves and the 1 half has to be 2 to 1. So we're going to make it that this is A times 0 0.5 or half of the area of this peak. So the next thing we need to look at for the metallic peak is that it's going to have an asymmetric peak shape and you can see that here from a standard sample of uh, polished titanium that's been argon ion sputter cleaned. You have this very very nice asymmetric peak shape in both the three halves peak and the one half peak so we have to fit that in. So from standard spectra we find that the titanium metal peak shape is defined by this function here in CASXBS called the LA function. We've been using that to, to, good, to good use. Um, some other things that we need to know is the splitting between the one half and the three half peaks and for the metal it's 6.05 EV and it actually varies for the different uh, materials. So you can see in the oxide and the, the two different oxides we have 5.77 and 5.72. So we'll have to take those sort of things into account as well. And we can also look at where the peak position is going to be. It's around 453.7 EV and we'll put that into our, our fitting routine as well. So let's go ahead and put in those conditions that we just talked about. The line shape is going to be LA 1.1 comma 5 comma 7 and the same thing for the one half peak the full width half maxes will define within a range so for the three halves peak um, we'll keep it somewhere between 0 0.7 and start with say 1 EV for now. The 1 halves peak is generally broader for the for this for titanium than than, uh, than the 3 halves peak and so we'll put that at say 0 0.8 or 0 0.75 to 1.1 to start with and the position constraints the 1 halves is a plus 6.05 EV above. So that's a good start for the, the titanium metal species. We won't hit fit just yet. We're going to add in the peak for the titanium 4 oxide species. So let's add those in. And 
I'll take a little bit and go through and set those up as well and I'll come back and, and show you what I've done. So we've added in the constraints for the titanium 4 species. Uh, the area for the one half peaks is constrained to be half of the titanium th or 2p3 halves peak. Uh, the full width half maxes for the, the main uh, 3 halves peak between 1 and 1.5 eV for the one half peak is much broader in titanium so between 2 and 2.3 and again this is all from standard spectra and the position constraints uh, the one half peak is going to be 5.72 eV above the three halves peak. The other thing that I've done is I've zeroed out the RSF value for the one half peaks and what that allows us to do it gives us an easy quantification uh, between the just the, using the three halves peaks so we know how much of each different species we have otherwise we'd have to add together the total of the three halves peak and the one halves peak. So that's a nice way of doing it. So let's hit fit and that's pretty good but obviously we're missing some stuff here and so because we have the metal and the four there's probably some suboxides in between so titanium two and titanium three so I'm going to fit in some peaks that uh, correlate to that and that's from literature values and uh, we'll see how those fit and I'll come back if we look at the literature values for the titanium two and titanium three oxides we're going to use these binding energies that we get which are an average of all the different citations that are out there and we're going to constrain the peak positions to be a certain amount below the titanium 4 oxide so about 1.5 eV below for the titanium 3 and about 3.3 eV below before the, for the titanium 2 so I've gone in and done all the constraints needed for the titanium 2 and titanium 3 species the one thing that I'll mention is that we actually allow for a little broader peaks for the titanium 2 and titanium 3. There's not really good literature spectra out there uh, for these and they, they're they supposed to have some multiple splitting associated with them. That may not be resolved but it may just result in some broadening of those of those peaks so we allow for that broadening within these. So if we hit fit a couple of times and we're now starting to get a pretty good fit of this entire spectrum and you can see we've quantified all the different species and that's that for titanium